to JT Magnus in game. This guy has felt like it, it felt like JT has not lost a game with his mag. So I don't know if you can bet against that. We shall see how it all goes. Game number one of a best of five. Plenty of games to go, of course, but you do want to get off on the right foot if you can. Uh, already tips being handed between Isn't Buck and nothing to say. His ex-teammates probably fond of each other as they are going to have to... Well, one of them is going to have to say goodbye here in the close qualifiers. The other gets to go through to Birmingham, you know? It's all fun and games until you have to qualify to the event. <laughs> that it is. Uh, should be a nice little bloodbath here. Almost, you know what? This Grand Finals kind of reminds me of uh, the Southeast Asian Finals, right? It was the same journey for Talon, getting knocked out in the first round of the upper bracket, then having this deep run, whereas it was a near-perfect run for Geek Fam. In fact, I think it was actually more perfect than G2IGs, all two zeros, until that Grand Final. So it's kind of a interesting note that, you know, the two regions have spent more time with each other because of how matchmaking is in China right now. A lot of them are queuing in C. We're seeing some of the strats in both regions meld. And even the storyline in these qualifiers are very similar. G2 IG, a really nice upper bracket run. Azure Ray, a little bit of a deeper run in the lower bracket. And we'll see if they can try to repeat what Talon did from their lower bracket run, I suppose. We should, we certainly shall. If it's a two for two trade on the bounty runes, let's see even start once again. Start off with the mid lane, of course, you are going to have nothing to say on that mid tiny against Ori on the mid Timbersaw. Yeah, arguably should be heavily favored towards Ori here in this mid lane, but we shall see. Of course, in the CS department, the tiny is going to have no issues. The whirling, de whirling death spam, though, is going to be a, a little bit problematic here for the tiny. That will be. It is pretty cheap as well for Ori to spam out, so it's not going to be too hard to just consistently apply that onto nothing to say. Has to use these tree grabs well for the denies and the last hits. Uh, early on, cleave damage is going to be your big bet up against Ori. But it is it is pretty Timbersaw favored. Not going to be too rough early on. If you can line up for avalanche tosses with some setup on, again, that four minute rotation, which we tend to see, that's where it can get a little bit scary for Ori. But even then, there's a lot of turn potential for this Timbersaw. And you have to remember, he's also universal type, so right click harass from Tim is not bad with stat batting here on Ori. With the 5 Ironwood branch start, he's gonna he's gonna have a lot of HP and right click and mana to play with. Top lane. Bit of a chase here between X Nova and FY. Mane, of course, on that Morphling, have a, having a decent time already. Buck gonna be on the Primal Beast. I mean, there's not too much he can do towards the Morph, but perhaps Ooh. they could look towards X Nova. FY, very sneaky, does find the Courier and the Salve of X Nova, but now he's going to be chased down once again. Blood Grenade is going to land here from X Nova. FY, though, just going to go for the TP player. Already knows that the Magic Missile is not skilled up from X Nova, so we'll get back towards the Tier 1 top tower. Of course, bottom lane, the one lane we haven't talked about yet, Faboka and JT against Lo and Tian Ming. Seems like a pretty damn good time for both sides. A very even kind of uh, bottom lane at the moment. Yeah, this is a lane where JT can actually opt for just going for Empower and harassing out low with the Cleave. Not quite going for that yet. It is a little bit more awkward for Tian Ming. And Chant Creep does just get death packed to down. So you always have this counter action from Baboka. But it is a little bit more back and forth. It should be a relatively farm heavy game. They have the... Creeps in a pretty good spot here on the side of Azure Ray, just shoved in. So ensuring that there's no big skewer back potentials for JT. And that does cut off some of the aggression, although Chan Ming is copping it. He'll be okay. JT thought about the skewer, but thinks better of it, as it wouldn't have been enough anyway to, to secure the kill. So, then Ori going for a bit of a cheeky pull, just for the water in though. Not, not doing anything too crazy. Radiance Courier. It's like Lowe's going to lose his courier here. This is the Wraith Band, which is a little bit upsetting for the Lunar. But Boke able to snipe it here on the Clinks. Bit of a fight over the Healing Lotus, but it will go the way of Boka. Tian Ming. Happy to just hand the harass with the Clinks way, though. A lot of damage being dealt his way. In fact, Boka may end up dropping if he's not too cautious. Now, JT is going to just kind of posture, though, aggressively, and does force Tian Ming back. Looks like both sides will be fine anyway. Looking back at mid for a second, though, I, I gotta tell you, nothing to say. Having a pretty damn good time. 16 and 4 on the tiny. 
I mean, Ori has kept up very well in the CS, but the thing is the Tiny has not been bullied out of the mid lane, which I think is a very important point to make. It hasn't yet. It is copying quite a fair bit of harassment. It's all going to come down to this 4-minute water rune. No sides are able to rotate this time around, so it should be even on both ends, and that will give more play for the Tiny. I think that benefits uh, nothing to say more than it does Ori, uh, having the even bounty rune trade. More important for Timb to try to play burst with some region advantage. So nothing to say is going to be fine so far. No first blood yet. But a lot of aggressive posturing. Like both sides are trying to maximize these lanes quite nicely. And you are. You don't really have a huge CS lead. I guess the one lane that is hurting is really just box lane. The Primal Beast isn't able to do too much to pressure out Monet. They're not able to really look for liftbacks. And FY is a little bit far forward. Uh, Buck is going to move in with a nice onslaught onto X Nova. FY maybe just baiting them forward. Able to secure first blood here for Buck. That's a, a cheeky little play, FY, not going down, sets up an easy team fight, and well there you go, bonus gold to go the way of the Primal Beast. That is a very uh, needed kill coming out here for Bach as well. Again, his lane has probably been the slowest we've seen across everyone. Everyone else is farming at a fairly decent rate, even JT in his lane just not struggling. So, needed a little bit catch up, Th does find it, and... Uh, FY has been playing on edge quite nicely on his way out. Get some stacks as well. Very efficient movement from our Rubik. And the side of Azure Ray with a first blood should be feeling good. And they're riding through the storm uh, of the mid lane. Nothing to say is starting to inch into the six. I'm pretty sure he won't go for the grow. Just more points in the nuking potential, which is going to be massive. But again, just not able to get the supports to rotate in to try to secure these runes. Six minutes for the power rune should be the big one that... They shouldn't allow it through for the side of IG and AR. I mean, big group up mid lane. Pretty early here for, for AR, but it seems like G2 IG are going to respond somewhat with Poboka moving in. FY is eventually going to leave, but does come back after placing a quick ward. There's nothing to say. Enchanted up here by Tianming. Toss away onto Ori, but FY will show up from the behind, and nothing to say is just gone. FY able to secure his first kill of the game is now Baboka in trouble. X Nova will show up on the Venge, but I don't think he's going to do anywhere near enough to keep Baboka alive. Nazure able to pick up another kill, and in fact, they'll even find a power rune. Now the damage amp rune is going to be handed the way of Ori. I'm, I'm just surprised with that delayed response from G2IG. Like, this is something we've seen them be pretty on point about going in for the four and six minute runes. Falls a little bit flat, much faster movement out from AR, setting up right at five and a half minutes in. And now you're going to have some siege pressure onto that tier one. Not that much. Siege creep has done enough damage, though, for it to feel rather nice here for the side of Azure. With the side lanes opening up, it does feel pretty good as well for the side of Azure. Low is still not really going to be threatened by JT. And Monet doesn't care too much about that primal beast. So it does... It does pay off in some ways, but you are just building up an Azure. The stacks are also just not scouted out. Again, the movement from IG supports, it's just been kind of constrained, which is an issue. Like, Azure will just be able to safely clear out some good stacks later on. You've got this really good timing for low to line up for. JT's not able to look for the skewer place. He does go empowered this time around, understanding it's going to be maybe a slower game for him. So we'll just focus on the build up. And nothing to say is not able to leave mid. Right? Like, even without the blink, like the first power rune for Tiny is just so important to find. Maybe he can line up for the second. Like, he needs something to happen on these side lanes or on mid. Well, that he does. FY rotating again to the mid lane. A little bit early on again, but X Nova has also made that uh, same rotation here on the bench. So much pressure being applied here on the Tiny to ensure that those power runes just do not go his way. Azure ensuring that nothing to say is not going to have himself a good game. Another power rune to go the way of Ori. To take the invus on the Tiny on the Timber Sword. Meanwhile, Bark onslaught onto X Nova. Doesn't quite reach, but has the pulverize, just needs to get within range for it though. X Nova will get caught eventually. Monet trying to move in to help out, but. X Nova certainly gonna die as Bach. Able to take a second kill already. Meanwhile, Tian Ming mid lane. 
has been caught. G2YG. They'll have themselves a trade. Yep. Not the best trade in the world. Uh, it is still important for JT as well to find these kills. And just kind of keep building up into that blink timing. No stacks being built up by side of G2IG, unfortunately. So no flash farm available here for the mag. And again, they haven't been able to scout out too well the enemy stacks. Although they do have vision being dropped from our revenge before dying. So they are aware, but... Not just not in position to contest. Azure Ray just playing a perfect early game so far, having everything they could possibly ask for. And for the side of G2IG, it's really down to connections with a tiny. Like, this is the one here that can play on the side of IG right now, of G2IG. And yeah, nothing to say, it's just stuck mid. I mean, he, he can't go anywhere else. They have to rotate onto that lane. They do spot Ori, but it's not the safest target. And two points into reactive is fairly durable. Yeah, they just have to let these stacks go. Oh, mid lane, nothing to say. Being chased down, FY though, unable to get within range of the telekinesis. We'll have to let the tiny go. Things going very well so far for Azura Ray, both their Luna and Timber at the top of the net worth board. Even low pushing in the bottom lane though. RP is going to oh. come out from JT, trying to go onto the Luna. Low, maybe going a little bit too far. And as I was saying, he was having a great game. Uh, just tries to push in the bottom T1 and ends up paying for it. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Gonna try to fight over this ruin, Ori. Oh, no, Ori does take it, but Boca will be fine to walk away. They don't really have the detection here to find Boca. So another another ruin going the way of Ori. No one going to nothing to say yet. This poor Tiny has not been able to get any of those power runes, and well, he just, he can't make any rotations on the Tiny. He's just been completely shut down for the first ten and a half minutes of the game. And that's, that's really the big key here for Izra Ray. Just all this emphasis on mid, just ensuring the responses are onto that lane, not anywhere else. Outside of that overextension from low, you're, you're happy. You, you still have your stacks intact. The Ancients are going to be really juicy for Ori or for Lo to clear out, and they'll still eventually find a siege on the bot tier 1 anyway. They've got a good army with a scale he's up, doesn't take too long, and the map is already shrinking. They're grouping up top here from G2IG, trying to get their own shove away, but Bach is in position to charge forward if there's an opportunity to do so here. We'll have a think about it. T1 tower still going down. Buck looks like he's just gonna have to watch it go down because nobody's rotated. Meanwhile, Azure Ray, they are taking stacks. I mean, you, you give up the T1 tower, but you are taking a lot of farm away from D2IG. But Boca is watching all this happen, but he cannot do anything on his own. In fact, they will reveal they can see him anyway. So, but Boca at least does manage to retreat. But Azure Ray seemed pretty happy with the trade. Like, again, you give up the top T1, but. You take all the stacks in the Dire Triangle, it's really not the worst situation. And hell, Mane might get scattered out here by FY. FY in that skeleton walk is going to see him without being detected. Mane is eventually going to see FY. Needs to find a way out though. Mane, he will go towards the east. Ori is going to chain up towards him. You've got an onslaught coming in. Mane, he will cancel the onslaught at least. But Buck is going to reach, but no, the magic missile. Ex Nova. Will make it in time to ensure the Primal Beast never gets his hands on the Morphling. And with that, it seems as though Manage is going to leave the area. But Azure Ray going to commit for the top tier one. They've got the numbers for this push. Love this early activity coming out from low. Just helping his team clear out these early objectives. Opening up uh, a nice map for himself to just feel safe in farming. No forward TP points right now for the side of G2IG. The side of G2IG do spot the Ancients, but again, they can't clear it with their heroes, really. So it's still safe for Azure Ray to just kind of play on that area. And Ori is just standing in the middle of everyone here. Hey, Ori. Uh, I'd say he's in a bit of danger, but it doesn't really feel that way yet. Although Ori, now with four heroes just rotating to ensure he does go down, oh. he will drop his bark. Getting skewered, in trouble. They'll go for FY instead, FY. <laughs> Swap plays going on here is... Oh, they found Buck anyway. Never mind FY. They've got the bigger target in the Primal Beast. Nothing to say. Not giving up. 
on that primal. Bark still running, has onslaught in one, but Ooh. not quite enough as FY. Oh. It gets a skewer, but it's not going to be it. He is down. And so G2IG, after a bit of an awkward landing stage. Oh! FY showing up. Oh, they don't want the ancient stacks taken. They'll commit the buyback just to ensure those ancient stacks will not be taken away. But G2IG, not though. done. They are still going. They've got the RP on JT. Tian Ming being targeted, but Ori will come in after the Magnus. JT trying for the RP, does get two of them, but it is only two that they have. JT, he will go down. Ori will follow them. So not a bad trade at all for G2IG as Bark moving in does find Baboka. We have two for one trade. So Zurray coming out on top, and of course they will now take the time to just take these ancient stacks before G2IG return. Yeah, they've got the damage coming in already with low. Maybe just needs someone to tank it for him. But is farming in a safe spot? Well worth the buyback for FY. It seems awkward, but again, these stacks are worth so much. They don't want to give that economy away to the side of G2IG. And for G2IG, unfortunately, the RP for JT just very forced. No one in position to really take full advantage of it. So it equalizes the game. Zure bleed out a little bit with Ori being out of position in that enemy jungle. But they do manage to find some trades and just get this farm going on low. Manta for the Luna, not far off now from just clearing out these massive stacks. There is room for G2 IT to just push. They are sieging down bot. RP still a ways off, so JT's just farming elsewhere. They might be able to catch someone here. I mean, nothing to say, he runs right into them. Bottom T1 tower does go down. The, the chase for the tiny never really happened. I mean, uh, Zure, uh, again, they were off to a fantastic start, but less than 1k advantage now their way. It feels like G2IG are the team ahead as well. Like, I I'd put my money on the Morphling over the Luna any day of the week. It feels like Manet maybe getting a little bit too much off the map now. In fact, they're going through the Twin Gates. JT is currently being hunted, but he's going to have help in just a moment. JT, he blinks into Bark. Has... Oh, doesn't have Skewer. So had no chance anyway. A very nice pickoff from Azure Ray, and Bark was just waiting right where the blink was going to happen from JT. Yep. Just not quite quick enough on that response for G2IG, but they are still going with their smoke. They've got decent damage coming in. That blink on nothing to say wants to get some action out. They know Pulverize is down for a little bit longer as well, so they have a nice window to burst here, but nothing to say was spotted. Or he's going to move in. Nothing to say. He'll get the avalanche off. He'll be okay. Uh, X Nova, though, not so much. Nova will lose his life. Manet actually did TP in just in case he could have helped out, but was a bit too late to the party. So Zure, it's again 2k advantage. Low still top of the net worth board. Mid lane, however, Ori getting caught with his pants down here by JT. JT commits the RP immediately in the timber. Well, he is melting rather fast. Ori is down. That's a good compensation. For G2IG, getting that kill onto Monet, accelerate into that Manta timing. Again, Ori feeling very confident with how durable he is, but he's just not durable enough. He needs that Sanj with a little bit more of that stat res to have a window to try to get himself out of dodge next time around. And those are some nice kills coming out for G2IG onto that Tim back to back. Still, Azure Rape not going to be feeling uncomfy anytime soon. And they've got the stable buildup for low, as you mentioned, still top in that worth. Bach is inching closer towards his full Eternal Shroud. So he's going to be a big issue in the front line, considering most of the damage is still, to an extent, magical. Although, you have a lot of physical output here as well, to be fair in G2IG. I think the side of Azure, it's, it's just a little bit more time, right? Like, you can still take these fights. The wider fights are a little bit more chaotic. And the side of G2IG, every time they have RP onto multiple heroes, it's always scary, although... Oh, Manet. No strength ball for Jeez. him. He is just annihilated. FY and Bark with a disable, lasting long enough to take down the Morphling. And they were very patient for that kill. They were waiting quite a while for somebody to show here from G2IG. And, well, they got the biggest prize they could have asked for. Yeah, that was, that was just quick. Really worth the wait there. Finding that big pickoff on the morph, slowing down his timings once more after he just 
finds that nice kill onto the Timb. And they're not done. Smoke again here from the side of Azure. Nothing to say it looks juicy. Yeah, but they don't seem like they're going to catch him. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Nothing to say it does successfully retreat. Instead, they're looking towards the Dire Triangle where they might find JT. X Nova, though, in prime position to break the smoke. They might just take him instead. We'll see the Venge. X Nova will tank the gank for his team. Though I say that, he's still alive. Skewer back from oh, JT, but JT... No. He's dying to the trample mid-skewer. Meanwhile, nothing to say. Gonna move in with the toss-up. Oh, but that's oh. a big avalanche from FY. Landing on three. Oh, it's a terrible fight now for G2IG. So was that trample mid skewer? Is that yes. what happened? It was still on. Like, oh. Bach ran in. Still had trample running, trying to kill off the Venge. Gets stunned. And JT thinks it's clear for the skewer back. He just melts. Like, that is just unfortunate. I think the Veil might have gotten applied onto JT as well on his jump in. So it, it's so much output on Bach. And again, he's very durable from the magic damage burst that you're trying to start off with on G2IG with that Eternal Shroud. Just, that is something you have to watch out for from the kidnaps here for JT. Just uh, the trample timing can uh, can make that just <laughs> deadly for yourself. I, I didn't even know oh. that was the thing. Mid lane, JT, skewer what? back oh. is there. Meanwhile, FY, oh, he committed an <laughs> RP. FY <laughs> failed successfully. He, he took the RP, but thought he had something else. Meanwhile, oh, Buck? Buck is in. Double onslaught out. X Nova gets caught. Baboka also caught out. We'll go down. X Nova will slowly follow. And yeah, I, I believe FY, he, he must have <laughs> thought he still had Avalanche or something. Because he, uh, yeah, he committed RP and just completely whiffed it. Uh, maybe, maybe he was just replicating what he felt like JT's RP was. <laughs> Alright, I'll just RP as well. I, I think he might have had the ID that he got skewered though. That felt like maybe a possibility. I don't you know. You know FY, he knows something. He's just maybe... And just like, all right, I got RP, I, I don't have a blink. This is not going to be useful, which is a fair understanding. He's still a long ways off from the blink, and the Rubik running into the middle of this line of G2IG would just die. So no point really hanging on. Instead, into Roshan, they go on Azure Ray's side. They've got the shard up here on low, and an amplified damage rune running for a little bit longer. Not going to take too long to clear this objective. Into the Conda, low will go as well. So we're about to have all of that fun with this item here. Not too long for Rush to fall. With no RP on G2IG, not going to be able to contest, not even to scan out the spot. Now you have to contend with two lives on the Luna. So far, so good for the side of Azure, as they've kept that tempo up uh, ever since. Like, the laning phase felt good for them. The initial ganks into this mid-game timing, just all lining up. My concern for the side of G2IG, right, especially with this tiny mid, is your burst window has is closing. You can still burst down the supports with the Avalanche Toss. The cores, not so much, especially the Timber Saw and the Primal Beast. Like, Eternal Shrouds are up. You've got the Eternal Shroud for Ori being built up as well, not too far off. You're not magically bursting anyone. So you will have to take, like, a sustained physical fight, which these heroes are also tanky in terms of armor. Smoke out from Azure. Mid lane, they see nothing to say. Lord of Atos gonna lock him down. Nothing to say, he gets nope. swapped out by X Nova. He will remain alive for now, but surely not for long. They will take down the Tiny once again, and it seems as though G2YG are slowly falling apart here in this game one. Azure, not slowing down, they'll head into that Dire Triangle. Mane does have, have to be a little bit wary, because Azure are running right towards him. If you get to that Ancient Camp by the Tormentor, it seems like they will avoid him for now, so the Morphling will be okay. But you, you start to wonder if G2IG are going to have a, a bit of a struggle coming back into this game. Like, Mane is the one saving grace, this Morphling is still having a fantastic time, but Lo is having a much better time. Yeah, I think it's also just how far JT and Nothing Say are starting to trail behind. Like, uh, more on Nothing Say really, the Tiny is just such a high tempo core. It does need some early timings. I am interested with his build. He is going Conda Tiny, so... I suppose Tree Tro with a Conda yeah. is, is kind of hilarious, I guess. It, it can play into that burst. It's, it's just... It, 
it's getting a little bit limited. Map is shrinking. Tier 2 falls down bot. Uh, Aegis still has a lot of time here for low. His own conda is done. Wait, and does it again, does it double apply? Because you already apply your attack damage on the throw. So does it... Yeah. So it doubles it? I would assume so. Oh. Yes. It, I believe Conda still fires a projectile like Phylactery does. I see a little wisp of a particle effect every time it does cast out. So it is a separate instance, if I'm right. I am not 100%. Do not quote me that. That, that, that is a lot of damage. You know, if, you, if it doubles up, that's a, that's a crap ton of damage. <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see how it does work out in TS. Maybe you know what I'm, saw something special. What is it, John? I'm, I'm more curious about, like, an Ags build up in Tiny with a con. <laughs> 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 if the initial three on the tree volley applies AoE damage like that, that's kind of dumb. Probably not, but... No. Would be epic. It would be fun. Oh, nothing to say. He's gonna see low or oh, low. Oh. This will be a big target. G2IG finding a very big fish. That is gonna be the Aegis down. Can they get him a second time? AR, they're trying to move up. FY getting caught out already. Eclipse is there, but JT's got the RP out. And they have caught the Luna plus the Rubik. Oh boy, Azure. I mean, this is where you start to get a little bit worried. You know, the deaths like that on your Luna are not gonna feel very good. Now they want big take from the side of G2IG. And they're starting to build up really nicely. JT going for the right item next. The BKB first over the full harpoon. Just because the lift backs have been very disruptive from FY. So just wants to be able to safely get an RP. Boboka's starting his hunt as well. He's going to find himself Tian Ming. Nice easy to kick off. Oh, Bark? Uh, Bark does kind of show up there for a second. But nobody makes the jump in. He, he did commit Onslaught. So I thought maybe that nothing to say would think about it, but it doesn't bother. Yeah, I think you just have to surrender to his pickoffs. This is where G2IG starts bouncing back in. You know, it was a slower game for them for sure to start with, but with nothing to say scaling for this Kanda damage and with Boboka having the Orchid and going hunting, there's a lot you can get done. This is when that Plink starts to get really threatening. You have to drop the vision down here for Azure to spot this. And the map is pretty clear for Azure Ray. No sentries on the ground. No major forward wards outside of this laning ward where right where the tier two between the tier two and the tier one down bot. And that's it for information. So a lot darker in comparison to the previous games we've seen from Azure Ray. G2 IG much more in position to utilize this clinks with a lot of good forward wards. We are going into the Ags here as well for Baboka. It's going to have even more of those skellies coming out here to just try to burst someone down. It does have to be softer targets, though. I, I don't see you making a successful move onto Ori or Bok, regardless of the Orchid. So it, it might have to just be low or the support. So, but Baboka is just keeping track. Oh, Ori, you'll get silenced. No way to purge it off. He's still just trying to walk out the old fashioned way. A swap is there, but it is a little bit mistimed. By X Nova. And so X Nova gonna have to be left behind. We'll end up going down as a rate. Won't find anything else. I mean, the rest of G2 IG, they will immediately leave the vicinity. Always poor old X Nova having to tank the gank for the team. Or just be the sacrificial lamb. But he has bought. Yeah, he doesn't mind. He, yeah, we, we, yeah, he's a venge. He doesn't mind. There's the, yeah, the conda for nothing to say. I wanna see this. Nothing to say. Show us what's special. Show us that tree grab toss, please. Oh, it's on call. The he tree did just toss a tree. Show it again. On a hero. Later on. I I can't wait to see. I this <laughs> this sounds like the dumbest thing that Ice Frog's ever created. Oh, uh, it's it's almost on parity with, you know. I mean, you have Morphling Tiny. It's on parity with old Morphling Ags with Tiny. <laughs> that, I missed those. Let's see. You'll get your chance to see it now, I think, John. Or he's going to show up. Baboka in trouble. Rod of Atos going to cancel his TB, and never mind. They are going to retreat. Azure looking for more. Lowe's going to show up here through the Twin Gates. In fact, they're going to find JT and nothing to say in just a moment. Lowe, he'll get started on the mag. Nothing to say, just, just TPing out with the blink immediately. They're the onslaught. Oh, boy. It was a very close call there for NTS. They'll still find JT, though. And with that, through the bottom lane they go. Azure. I, I don't think they go high ground yet. No. 
It's it's too risky. Buyback's already on JT. Respawns are still fairly short. But they can do good chip damage. Maybe force out that Fortify for his usage here. So, should still find a little bit of an opening. And yeah, force the Fortify out. Use their own as well to hold the creeps in place and see how much they can get before G2 IG fully respond. JT so close to respawning, not wanting to buy back. So you're going to have to cop it. And the Luna will find some value. I mean, they still get the top T2 tower while they're there. I mean, there's a bit of a trade happening, certainly in the favor of Azure. Azure immediately looking to retreat. Roshan is 10 seconds away till it tells us when it is going to respawn. But Boka's trying to find a straggler in the meantime. Ori has kind of been left behind. He's underneath the vision of G2IG, but they need more than just the clinks. Roshan's a quick respawn as well. If they found a pickoff, they could rush for the Roshan pit, and here we go. Buck's gonna be caught out. The Primal Beast, look at it go down. Buck has a chance for the Skewer, no. Needed to get the Onslaught off, could not though. The Skewer was there in time. Roshan is now officially available, though it has not been scouted by either side. And it seems as though G2IG probably not gonna guess that it is there. Yeah, would have been a prime opportunity with everyone focused down bot here from G2IG, Azure could try to sneak up on top. They'll find a tier 2 for their trouble first. They've got really quick push pace coming out with Boboka already fully online with his damage. Azure, they can't afford to give that next rush out. That is the opening onto high ground here for the side of G2IG. It does switch to daytime, so it will be closer to their outpost. A little bit of a reach here for the side of Azure to kind of get that handled up. And G2IG again, not relenting from this bottom position either. Keeping mid shoved in as well. Let's see. Side of Azura is starting to clump around. They are still ready to go. There is still the RP threat from JT. And with a BKB, saving plays on that. Not going to be as straightforward here for the side of Azura. Oh, we have a smoke on smoke situation again. The BKB on Mane is certainly going to help through this team fight for, for G2IG. Seems like they will head towards the Roshan pit now. Scan is out, perfectly catching AR, so they know exactly the position of Azure Ray. They'll wait on the high ground of the Twin Gates. Buck, though, gonna move in, does find Mane, but that's not quite the target he wanted to start on. Instead, they'll go after nothing to say. The Tiny, already losing half his HP, but they'll swap him out, nothing to say. We'll be okay. Meanwhile, an RP has caught low. They've got the Luna, they've got Buck to boot low. He's gonna pop the Eclipse, try to survive through oh, it, went? but low is just getting way too low, and he's down. JT will survive. They'll commit the buyback on the Luna, though. In the meantime, Ori is dropping and Ori is gone. Buck still trying to fight in the Roshan pit here up against the Tiny, but nothing to say. We'll survive. Low still trying to fight, but he needs to retreat. There's only two heroes left. His inch is running. Tianming wants nothing oh. of it. JT, he'll miss out on the skewer. But Low is still just being chased here by Mane. Be okay though, it seems as though G2IG, they'll retreat back towards the Roshan pit. But G2IG, they are now officially in the lead. Oh yeah, they reel it back. It looked like a decent spot for low, but they do shift their attention onto that Luna. Not quite enough lifesteal to sustain through just with the moon waves just yet. That's what man that's not cutting it. Second Roche going way of G2IG, they've got the Roche banner to help in that siege now as well. And for Azure Ray, this is the point where that scaling sort of stops, right? Like, your Primal Beast can only do so much. Your Timber Saw still does a lot of damage up front, but the saves are way too strong from the side of G2IG. The Solar Crest, the barriers coming in, the Swap Barrier coming in as well. It's just not enough for you to play Burst now for Ori, and trying to find some targets up front. And it was a really isolated fight. Again, Low was split away from the rest of his team. He was ganged up on. They did manage to get on top of that Luna when it looked slightly dicey for JT. And they still have time here. Fresh Aegis, RP and 15. G2IG, it's their time to hunt. Oh, Buck gets caught. Nothing to say. Immediately in. Has found the Primal Beast, but Buck is going to be able to at least retreat for now, though. The tree throw Ooh. is not going to be Ooh. enough. 90 HP he will survive on. They will still kill FY. So they do get something for their trouble, but the Primal Beast... Barely able to escape. 
Yeah, a little bit unfortunate for nothing to say. Conda was not off cooldown at that point. If nope. he had a Conda damage on top, would have been a nice kill to snipe away. Still, they find a pick off. They maintain this lead. They're shoving in the lanes now on the side of G2 IG. Only the mid outer tower left before they start knocking onto that high ground. And there's, there's nothing really stopping the side of G2 IG here. The high ground defense of Azure Ray is all right. They, it, you do need BKBs. I think that's a big issue. Like you need you need a BKB on Bach to just stand forward, channel this pulverize out, and lock one hero in, and just try to focus damage on top of that. And you need more life steal on low. He is trying to go into the full satanic. Has the disassembly to save the morbid mask from the mask of madness. So there's some. He's a little bit closer than you'd expect here. Whether or not that's enough remains to be seen. Like he was doing fine with everyone clumped up until the burst came in. Smoke's kind of spooky, John. There's no buybacks available here for, for Azure or G2IG. Not one buyback on the map. In fact, there's one. Exnova's got one now. But Azure, they have smoked out. They'll go through the top lane. They'll just push out the creep wave and maybe just reposition themselves. So that kind of, they were just trapped in their base for a moment there. Well, G2IG just continuing to keep the mid lane pushed in, but they are certainly not confident in trying for a high ground attempt yet, because the game is still relatively close between these two. Only a 4k net worth differential. Nothing going to come out of the uh, the smoke attempt here from Azure, by the way. Of course, they have just relocated towards the northern side of the map. Just get some farm going for themselves while, while they are waiting. See, they do not want to fight into G2IG while the Aegis remains on Manate. Oh, I like these wards they set up on Azure Ray. Like, that smoke does lead to some forward vision outside of their base, so they can afford to play in this top jungle. Maybe try to snipe someone that rotates into this lane to try to repair it, but they won't hang out for too long. Still, again, some information on the map. Azure Ray has been dark for a long time here, so just having that is a little bit useful. Monet has the full Scotty up, so more ways to just make it awkward for Lo, who wants to sustain true with a Moonglaive's active and a Satanic coming in, not going to be as great with a Morphling on hand. And also very fun for the Morph to turn into the Luna in a push, just free farm for Monet, and free laning pressure without too much commitment. G2IG now lining up for their own smoke, RP ready. They catch is the big target. Tianming, not a bad target to just secure. Oh. We'll jump in. Skewer is there, but a nice lift up is going to ensure they could not get the Skewer all the way. Is JT dropping RP oh. though? Oh, the RP! He caught three of them! Oh, that's already two down. Ori is gone to boot. They will commit the Eclipse here on the Luna, but it does nothing. Everyone from G2IG gets out. No one goes down. They've still got 35 seconds on the Aegis. The G2IG, they want to go back in by the looks of it. Manet's not done yet. He will move on to that T3 tower. 20 seconds of the Aegis time left. They will get the mid racks, but that should be about it. Manet. I mean, he could choose to just let himself die here, but it's not worth the risk. Five seconds left in the Aegis, they will retreat. 11k advantage now with one racks up. Considering how the game was going for Azure, you'll be sitting very pretty right now if you're G2IG. Uh, definitely no complaints from this dire team. Oh, for sure. They played patiently. They managed to just catch up. A couple of overextensions from Azure cost them. They are still hunting somewhat here. See Baboka farming up, but not going to try to contend with that. They will take the Tormentor instead. Although FY has to be mildly cautious. Does manage to back off in the nick of time. They've got the boulder throw, the rock throw. Not the best shard, but some additional control, I suppose. And BKB is still necessary for Bach. Like, this is the big issue right now for Azure. They're relying a lot on the Primal Beast to come in with a Pulverize. We saw it in the last fight. Once that Pulverize fades away or is cancelled prematurely, it's just all the openings you'd want for the side of G2IG. And they've got their own BKBs to protect. They've got the damage lined up. They've got the scaling kicking in for NTS and for Monet fully online. Azure have to be have to be smart and clever about these next few fights. 
There's an Amplified Damage Rune as well. They could run up to it. But don't quite have vision in the area there. Now, bottom lane's being forced in here from G2IG. Uh, as a raid, they're going to have to make a choice. So they have spotted the rune now. So they are going to have the Amp Damage Rune. Bark. Ooh. Close call. We'll be able to blink away. So Amp Damage Rune will be handed over to Lo. He does want a bottle, though. He can't really afford to waste this one. They need every advantage they can get. And there's your bottle out. He'll have a double damaged bottle up. Azure Ray. Slowly move in. They'll see G2IG across the mid lane. Nothing to say. Gotta bait them forward. Ori does jump in, but NTS does have the BKB available. We have to commit it, but it seems as though they are going to retreat once again. Damage Amp Room was popped, but obviously nothing going to come out of it. A bit unfortunate for Low, not able to translate that, but the BKB loss is a little bit bigger here, for nothing to say, down to the 7 second BKB without that protection for a minute. Could be a window of opportunity for the side of Azura Ray. Fortunately, it looks like all they can do is kind of shove. So just try to repair the lanes. Bot still being steadily shoved in. Someone has to repair that. It will be Chan Ming. And the next one to watch out for is that Roshan. 20 seconds until we, until we see that timer here. Could go either way. Like, if Azure Ray finds it, they stay in the game. They can take the next few team fights with relative confidence. Use that time to get that BKB on Bach and secure some more team fight control for themselves. The level 25 talent is also really important to find, but can that, that's a ways off here for Bach, unfortunately. That pulverized duration with a BKB is really a game changer for Azure Ray to rectify this lack of control. Like that, that's what it really boils down to. You've got all the control in the world and on the side of G2IG. You've got the swaps to kite them around. You've got the RP. You've got this Morphling who can dip in and out without worrying about too many stuns here. You've got this Clinks now with a full Ags along with a refresh for JT. So double RP, double BKB ready. Scary fight for Azure Ray on the wrong foot here. Yeah, it's a pretty concerning kind of situation that Azure Ray found themselves. G2IG will reveal their position around the bottom lane. Azure looking to try and draw a line and wrap around the long way. Perhaps through the dive triangle to try and get towards where G2IG are currently standing. Because Roshan is going to be up in 50 seconds, which is the position that G2IG want, just around the twin gates. They'll hold that. Azure they have smoked up and they are going to wrap around all the way through that Radiant Jungle. Try to go from the north down towards the south where the Roshan pit is. Right around the Lotus Pool. Oh, but Boka, perfect position. He'll break the smoke and he'll run. They do dust him up, but Boka might drop. Does not have buyback. It's a 4v5 scenario now. G2IG. And you've lost your clinks, do you still want to fight? Because Roshan is up in 10. They're going to go for a smoke out. Tian Ming does get caught. That'll be a support for a support. But FY will move in onto Mane. They will lock him down. Azure is still very cautious not to go for the fight yet. So it's a 4v4 scenario now. Oh, Ori oh, barely oh. avoids the skill back from JT. Now Bark moving in with an onslaught does connect onto two, but he's a bit of a sitting duck. Nothing to say. Just doing so much damage. And Bark oh is gone. God. He'll commit the buyback immediately though. Low moving in onto the tiny, nothing to say. We'll go for a run as Ori is just chasing him down. They'll even pop the Eclipse, but X Nova will save the mid tiny. He will take the death for the team. And ultimately, this this buyback committed from Bark, it won't feel very good. You only got a venge out of this. Damn. And they're still trying to posture for RP. They, they have this moment in the pit they can fight for. Although oh, JT. JT. They've broken the link as JT has been caught oh out. God. JT pulverized. JT should be down, but gets the RP off. He'll refresh. Oh. He's got the second one off as well. Low. Low is down. But he'll buy back. Surely. He's got it available. Mane, there's your buyback from Low. Mane going to be able to waveform away. Ori in the meantime. No, they want Bark. They want the dieback on the Primal Beast. Bark though being lifted away. FY does save the day. Nothing to say. The one to go down. FY barely saving the Primal Beast from that dieback.
And it seems as though Roshan is going to be open the way of Azure. Oh, oh, low. He just lost his courier with the, with the MKB on it. That's, that's a big loss. Just not going to be able to deal that damage they need onto Monet. At the very least, Aegis will be going their way. Refresh hard on hand. So maybe double pulverize coming out here. The buyback for Bach. It, it's a big one to commit. He still has no BKB. I mean, he's running up, trying to give information for the team, trying to be durable. Look at Baboka, just split pushing. That he is, but it, it will cost him his own life. <laughs> this is kind of the concern. You are, I mean, you are at the stage where the support clinks can just start sieging towers when you're not watching, so you've got to be a little bit worried of that. But they will punish him. Baboka going to be down for another minute with our buyback available. But as they're ready, they're back in the game. They are still 12k behind when it comes to the net worth. But now with a, with an Aegis up, on low, you, you've got to be very happy. And you are, and you finally have that BKB for Bach. So that next charge in, gonna, be, gonna feel a lot better for the Primal Beast. Should look for maybe a synthesized Ags next, an Ags Blessing, if why possible. There, why is there a refresher shot sitting in the Radiant Fountain? Just, I just sitting there. I think they left it. I do not know why they've left it. It was in... Ori's backpack, maybe no one wants it. I do not know. Like, double but BKB is pretty good. Surely but... someone just keeps it in the backpack. I thought Ori would, honestly. I'm... Yeah. He sent it back, so. Okay. <laughs> maybe even, doesn't like, want it. Maybe Blow could have it after the Aegis, I guess. You know, double Clips doesn't seem so bad. Double Satanic always seems kind of nice. Dyer's top tower. Maybe it's cursed, you know? Maybe they've, maybe they've lost games with having a backpack refresh before. That's fair, that's so they fair. in the base. I, PTSD, I understand. That's all right. They'll take the top tier 2 tower, that's gonna be about it. They won't push for the high ground yet. They'll bide their time, maybe try to find a, a pick-off before they can think about high ground again. More BKBs to be worked on, like Lowe's got a BKB he can work on as well, so he's going to start farming his own one up. It's the beautiful thing about delaying your BKB timing is the fact that you are going to have them very late on in the game. Yep. That 9 second charge can make all the difference. That's going to be the big reveal for the side of Azure Ray. Again, they still have that 9 BKB charge for Buck, so he has something to play with. Yeah, when low has his, it's going to feel a lot better. I think the interesting thing about this game going late is like this potential for Ags build up on low. Yeah, you know, like Eclipse on top of a Charging Primal Beast is pretty scary. Again, this is more of a luxury item. Probably like a 7th slot, 8th slot at this rate sort of pick up here. Low switches out the build for the Swift Blink instead, so wants the offense potential. See if he sticks true with that one. And has the MKB ready to fly out to him as well on the courier respawn. I think what might have happened with a refresh shard, by the way, is that Ori was across the map. Or, yeah, maybe just far apart from Lo at that moment, sent it home for a courier to pick it up and didn't realize Lo's courier was dead. Could be one explanation. Could be. I mean, Lo's courier is now alive. The MKB is... No, oh, Lo does turn the courier around. But that could be just for the blink deck. I think it is. Yes, it is. He's got the Swift Blink and the MKB. Okay. So nobody okay, wants no the refresh shot. We've established that nobody wants. That's fine. I mean, we've seen we've seen uh you know teams just leave refresh and cheese and Roshan before. Cheese, I understand. So, refresh shot, I do not. Cheese is so good though. Refresh, yeah. I mean, leaving any of them on the deck is just kind of silly. But we've seen teams do it. At yeah. least Azure pick it up and then leave it in their fountain. So hats off to them. Okay. They they remember. It's okay. Now, they're the ones playing, not us, John. There's a reason for that. <laughs> they know better than we do, that's for sure. Uh, Azure, they're going to smoke up as five. Wrap around through the mid lane. Up towards the top lane they'll go. They're having a look around for somebody in this dire jungle, but nobody is hanging around that area. All of G2 IG currently just camping their own base. Could think about popping a smoke of their own if they so wish. But for now, they are only interested in the high ground defense. In fact, no, none of the supports have got a smoke. No, they do. X Nova just brought one out. So they could make that choice. Of course, the Aegis is still up for another 45 seconds. So they're going to wait for the expiry. The Aegis, nothing's going to come of it here for low, I don't think. He's just going to let it expire. Drag the Satanic in and 
just wait for another day for that big team fight that we're looking for. So the Aegis essentially does kind of just get wasted. Just a bit of a farming Aegis. A bit farming. I think it is important for Azure to get this vision game out. So they did manage to set up some wards to play around now. They've got info. If the side of G2 IG does decide to come in, they've got coverage. Information is king, as we've seen on a lot of these games between the Chinese teams that has dictated quite a fair bit about how well your ganks go and what openings you can find. A big pickup for FY, full sight of Vice now up and running. So you've got that additional control that has been lacking here for the side of Azure. G2 IG, they know the Aegis has expired. The timers have gone off. So, they can try for something sneaking around, but it's just the Ninja Gear smokes. They're not going to fully commit. And, oh. Is Ray going through the gate? That's a five-man twin gate usage. Dyer are scanning. They're, they're so desperately trying to find G2IG. Like, they've got the Swift Blink plus the Satanic that they haven't been able to use yet on low. So, they, I, I think they want to try and test out a fight with those two items up now on the Lunar. Now, I even forgot about the MKB that he didn't have either. So all these items now available for the Lunar, he just wants to test them out. The G2IG, not interested in playing the punching bag here for the Lunar. They will continue just avoiding them all together. Of course, both teams are going to be waiting for this Roshan attempt, which we are going to find out in about two minutes when Roshan is going to respawn. Is now G2IG. <laughs> Five-man usage of the Twin Gates as well. I think, if, if we're going to have this many Twin Gate usages, that they should just raise the tolls. Just raise it. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah, every consecutive use. It's just more. Regardless of team, by the way. So it's interesting. And that would be a fun thing to do. Shield rune spotted. Denied by low. So no additional EHP coming out here for the side of G2IG. I always kind of find it funny that... Replicate does actually trigger your conda as well. It's a funny little thing. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why the hell not? Still both teams continue to wait for Roshan. Mid lane. Oh, Bark. Gonna show himself on the creep wave, but does blink away. Oh, G2IG would have loved that pick off onto Bark. Have they had the opportunity? Buck will not give it over to them. Both teams hanging on opposite sides of that mid lane for now. Dota Plus is sitting at 71% in favor of G2IG, by the way. So, still heavily favored here is the Dyer. Mind you, they are one racks up, which may have something to do with it. That it would. I'm rather interested in seeing how much the Rattle Cage from Bach does in the middle. He is copying a lot of damage. The armor does feel great. I am curious if the Reverberate has an internal cooldown. Because I feel like he will eat 180 damage very fast. Like, multiple instances of, of 180 damage. That feels like be fun, although. Bottom lane, RP's committed. Who have they got? It's going to be three targets. JT oh. setting up a perfect team fight. Bach, X Nova, and Tian Ming, they are all gone. Ori will jump in to join the team. Oh boy, you, you got X Nova, but that was about it. Three down for the price of one. Another great fight for G2IG. It is opening for the high ground. Buybacks are ready. They're going to have to expend them. They can't do this alone. Oh, FY. FY. Nice skewer low. He's got the Eclipse. Oh, oh God. they've got the Morphling. No, X Nova. We'll save Monet. We'll be able to get out Ori. just barely as Ori's still trying to chase Monet down. Monet gets tossed up. It's still alive. Everyone just in the air and what? they've got him. The Morphling is gone. Nothing to say. Trying to escape. But it's not looking good for him. He's down to boot. FY on the Rubik. Making the high ground defense work. I mean, that looked like such a bad scenario, but... Just a couple of buybacks and the skewer back. The isolation, the chain control onto the Morphling comes out on top. FY. He does everything. The side of Vice paying dividends back here for the side of Azura Ray. And now they have access into Roche. 20 seconds away. A little bit more patience needed for Azura Ray. But this, this is their opening. 
They take that Roshan again. They've got to knock onto the high ground. They won't sit back and wait. Just try to repair their lanes while they're at it. Maybe force the buybacks first. And then try to take a re-engage here on the side of Azura Ray. But you can never count them out. You can never count FY out. No. And he does make magic happen right there. The tools for G2 IG are to come online. A minute more for refresh over the RP. So just a single RP and single BKB here. And low, he'll just rip the racks apart first. Yeah, well, one racks up now for, for Azure, right? They will not stick around for any more, though. They just take the bottom racks. It was open. There are buybacks available on G2 IG anyway, so... You did have the opportunity to force them, but they'd rather just go for the easier play in the Roshan. There is another refresher shard available on Roshan. In fact, the, the other one got taken, by the way. No longer in Fountain. Yeah. That's good news. Yeah. Very good news. We'll see if they send this one back to the Fountain as well. The Roar does give Rosha away, but it's a very far point for G2IG to run into. So it's going to be a freebie this time for Azure. Aegis up on Ori as he plays the front line. Refresh for low. And I like this. He is going for the Ags. This is when things get really scary. Your BKBs are dwindling down to a few seconds each. Down to six seconds. You've got a really good set of targets to just drop that Eclipse on a friendly target. And it it will be really hard to fight in. Like As long as Lowe doesn't get caught out in the RP or get chain stunned first. The damage coming in now from Azure Ray is plentiful. They've even got the Eclipse Lucent Beam mini stun talent. So... And when caught in that Eclipse Ags is just is just pretty much gone. Like it, it's going to be very hard to counterplay there. Refresh up for Monet. So double BKB usage ready. So at the very least extending that to 12 seconds of spell immunity here for the morph. Going to be nice. And double usage of Satanic can also be pretty good here. But Azure Ray, they're keeping themselves up. They equalize with Arax. Win probability has gone down to 64% G2IG's way. And again, uh, high ground pierce is difficult for Azure Ray into G2IG. The threat of RP is something they have to respect. But uh, yeah, double Ags upgrade Eclipse with a refresh shard. Low could have some fun. Five man smoke up. They're still frontlining for the team. TG to IG again, very cautiously, just hanging by the the dire base, not giving away their position, not giving away the opening that Azura Ray are looking for. Go through the bottom lane, perhaps. They will lose a courier here on Baboka. They are so desperate to, to get this fight going, just not finding anyone yet. They all show up at the top lane now. Nothing to say is going to show on a creep wave. Baboka around to, to tank the gank and break the smoke on FY, but doesn't get quite close enough. Now a full nullifier. Available on Baboka? No. A few more ways to just isolate these heroes if he does go to assassinate them on that Plinks. Basically a secondary core now for Baboka. He has equalized with nothing to say his farm, so he is scaling up. Still has that casual Crystalis that could be upgraded as well. And is getting some good split push out. Just cutting off the creep wave top to ensure that there's no easy access for Azure Ray onto any sort of Split. It's just going to clear the banner out as well. So it takes away that... Well, yeah, just chips away at the banner. Threatens a little bit onto the tier 3. No response, of course, with uh, backdoor still kicking in. Very tense moments. Aegis, only a, f a minute 40 left. Azure Ray, they need to find something. G2IG, very disciplined to just sit high ground. Not give those openings out. But now they might not have a choice. Manet's going to move in. Jump is there, who have they got? It's gonna be the engine effect, they've got a couple, Ori gets caught out to boot, the RP is there! Buck is gonna try and save, Manet dropping low, the Eclipse is doing so much damage, Manet now gonna get pulverized again, but the RP 
Lee. It's out again. This time around, they've got the Lunar. They'll drag him right into the base. Lotho going to go for the man fight. Mane looked like he might be in a bit of danger. Is still going for the fight against the Lunar to boot. As only apparently two have died. It's both position fives, but Lo is still being chased down. Mane, in fact, will turn back onto Ori, who does go pretty far forward. They'll toss him up. They'd love a timber kill if they could secure. Nothing to say he'll refresh, but he could knock at the avalanche. Ori will survive. X Nova did commit a buyback, but it'll amount to nothing. And as to Ray, I mean, it's a 4v5. They will retreat. There's no need to force high ground again when you're at a disadvantage. And T5 items, they might be coming. Only a minute 20 away. That they are lining up. The damage output right now here from our morph. Monet is doing a ton of work in the middle of these fights, but no one's dying. The Eclipse out as well, and the damage from Ori up front is a threat. But. Again, it's just not enough. Aegis was expended as well, so that means Azure are going to have to gun for next Roche before getting anything done. At the very least, you're at the three minute timer now. There is room for G2IG to start playing their own game. They've got the Arcane Blink up on JT. A little bit of healing, more Blink active time, which is always nice on them on the Magnus. But double RP is down for a minute and a half, so not going to have that massive tool here ready on G2IG and for the side of Azure Ray well it's also about patience like and they've got good forward map control now with some vision so the Aegis providing some ward vision is good but just gets taken away with the gem coming back here to X Nova not gonna be able to maximize on that information it's it's all about who has the jump on who right it's all about who gets to play around whose wards can you sneak around? Can you leverage this clinks to break the smokes here on G2 IG? Have Baboka just scout forward constantly. He does have his own Conda up as well, so he does oh, upgrade. Do you five items, Jonathan? Here we go. Apex on the morph. Makes sense. Pirate hat here for, gonna hurt. for the edge. Oh, the, the, the Conda's going to really hurt. Pirate hat <laughs> for Tian Ming, so now the edge is going to be uh, just machine gunning people down with impetus shots. Love to see that. What else we got? Who, who else? Oh, there Ooh. it is. The giant ring for nothing to... Ooh, oh, that's boy. a big boy. That is a big boy. Oh, man. Okay, that conda's also gonna hurt. Uh-oh. <laughs> Another giant ring. Oh, Buck, Ooh. he's got one too. Wait, wait. Oh, Buck doesn't get any bigger, does he? Because the primal no. beast... Oh. The scale isn't as high as other heroes, so he just oh. looks kind of sad. That Look is... at this tiny. Why is tiny allowed to grow this big, but not the primal beast? Oh, he's, he just keeps growing. You know, puberty never comes here for the tiny. Just always growing, this guy. <laughs> uh... hmm. My goodness. Got the, you've got the nice force boots up for low, so it frees up an item slot. Um, what, do we, what do we want to go for? Like, it, it is fully topped up. Maybe you could toss the hurricane pike, swap it with your MKB. That's basically it. We're, we're at that point where everyone's fully slotted up. Or he has Book of the Dead. And I'm like, why, not, why haven't you talked about that? I'm, I'm tell me about the Book of the Dead. I'm waiting for you to shut your damn mouth, Jonathan, so I can talk to you about how great the Book of the Dead is. This is the best <laughs> item here for Ori. And I think Ori's got the idea. He just, he just wants to win the game, Jonathan. Finally, somebody <laughs> with a brain. <laughs> you know what I enjoy more? FY with Seer Stone. You, know, you can oh, you can nice yap thing. on about you can yap on about that book of the dead all you want, but the reach of FY now, even the hexes, and the pullback saves, it's gonna feel even better for that Rubik. Smoked around, really good tracking of that Roche timer. We're gonna see how long it is now as well. It is a longer one of two and two minutes twenty. This next team fighter, it's going to be absolutely explosive, I feel, between these two teams. Roshan two minutes away. Another giant ring coming out for JT. <laughs> How lucky he can does. he get in the team? He's all oh, up, he's oh. out, but no, that's an oh, illusion. No! That is an that's illusion. One. Ori 
has been caught though on the timber. He's already dropped half HP, but is going to retreat. They'll even use an Eclipse. Meanwhile, Buck has popped his own PKB, trying to go after him. Nothing to say. Does get the Pulverize. <laughs> They'll catch FY though. FY being skewered back here by the Mag, but the Eclipse flying what? out is just doing so much damage. FY finally goes down. Meanwhile, Mane, he'll heal up with the Morphling. He'll go after Ori. They'll aim down Baboka in the meantime here for AR. So Baboka is gone, and so will be X Nova. Two supports dropping. Azul Ray in a 5v3 situation. G2RG with no supports. This this is scary. You actually do need the Venge and that Clinks. They, they are a key part of how G2RG are pumping out damage and getting some saves. Just that missed jump, missed read from G2RG, getting very trigger happy with how tense the game is. This does happen, but it's costly. They couldn't get the double RP off already using one. They get caught in the Eclipse. At the very least, the hold this time was not enough to keep Oni down. So you don't have to worry about your Morphling here. And Rush is slower. They catch FY. Big dieback. They do. Why? Is it? Not dying yet. He's no way he alive. lives. Nothing to say. He's the one in danger. Nothing to say. He's been caught out. He's gone. Oh, oh boy. God. I mean, he's got buyback available in the tiny at the very least. Meanwhile, Lowe's Low? chasing down for more, trying for JT. JT going to be able to get the skewer away, but Lowe's on at the tier 3 towers. Oh, low. Oh. Jeez. This, they forced a the buyback. That's that's huge. Roshan is spawning. You could just go Rosh here on a Zerate. There's enough time. An Amplify damage rune as well to make matters worse for the side of G2IG. Five seconds until it's up. It will walk up north soon, but you know, like half a minute window is fast enough here for the side of Azura Ray, and Bach will check at the right time. Jeez, Louis. <laughs> what is this game? What is this game? I uh, know. What does it turn into? You know into? what it feels like? It feels like we're already four games in. This feels yeah. like game five of a best of five. It really does. Smoke out again around the, the, that Roshan pit on the bottom right corner of the map. Roshan is available. Another refresher shot on Roshan. Why the hell not? Azure, looking to move in. G2IG running to the other side. Low, he's gonna Scan. find JT here. JT skewers one away, but Low's gonna come with him. They'll try to chase. The mag is completely alone. If they can find JT, it'd be massive, but no, he blinks. He will make it out. As everybody is relocating to the new Roshan pit, top left corner. Azure Ray, they are going to get started, but in the mid lane, Baboka, he's going to split push. He's going to push in the tier 4 towers. He is not having it. God. Roshan's still happening. G2IG, they'll hear the roar, they'll go back in for the tier 4 towers again. Meanwhile, Ori, he's onto nothing to say, but the tiny does towers walk his gone. way out. Ori's going to be careful. They've lost the tier 4 towers. Toss back on FY. FY could be dying back on the Rubik, but he's got an A on disc. He'll survive a little bit longer. He'll skewer away and still survive somehow. G2IG, they'll get one T4 tower. The other one is left standing on 550 Wait. HP. They left cheese and bottle in Roche Pit, though. They sure did. Uh, courier on a quest. Low will rectify that. Thank you, Low. And unfortunately, the quick respawn, the, the quick response out from Azure does ensure that at least one tier 4 stands. It looked like one more tar bomb would have done the trick here for Baboka. Doesn't manage to find it. So. You are fairly happy. The courier, unfortunately, can't see in Rush, so they can't pick it up. <laughs> Maybe a freebie for Baboka. Would love a cheese right now. 7k lead comes out for Azure Ray. Win probability is still 60% the way of G2IG. And I, I can't blame Dota 2's uh, AI overlords for that, of course. Uh, the split push. Baboka is just going to look for that opportunity. He knows the, the objective here. High ground is still a high threat. Or is there a way to try to pierce into? Low is actually just going to walk back for the cheese and bottle. Good on you, Low. You can't no, take the bottle. The... Yeah. Leave the bottle alone. No need for it. Well, here we go again. 67 <sighs> minutes into the game. You know, I'll tell you what, John. This is why Baboka should have got Book of the Dead. You know, if he's going to rat anyway, why bother <laughs> with this mirror shoot? That's a fair point. Maybe he didn't have Book of the Dead, Mike. You know? Have you considered that? I bet he did. <laughs> I wish we could see. I, I, I honestly wish we could see what options every player had. That's that's still something I I, I want after all this time. We, we haven't got the technology, John. We, have, we haven't got there, there yet. yet. Not there Soon. yet. Soon. We're working on Soon it. Soon enough, Mike. 
Hmm. I'm in a stalemate. It is. <laughs> it's just gonna hold unless someone goes outside. Or is a ray get too hasty? Like, legitimately, there's no way to pierce the high ground with double RP unless you get a pick off first for Azure Ray. And G2 IG will not give you pick offs. Instead, just split push with Baboka. So, you're at an impasse, Mike. You, you are. We are stuck in Dota hell now. Or Dota heaven. I'd call, call it heaven, John. This is a, a fantastic game between these two teams. And we're, we're at the stage now where Divine Rapy is, of course, going to be picked up. So, we'll see Manet already queuing one up for himself now. Be a bit of fun, Divine Rapier Kanda. I mean, I realize we're 68 minutes into the game, but you know, it, it's still people. a lot of fun. Yeah, you can you can probably burst down Tian Ming. He doesn't have anything defensive. FY, you could instantly pop the Aeon disc, which is funny, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so you have some neat options. 60k net worth here on the Luna, but it doesn't even matter. You know, it's a this is the stage of the game where, like, no player knows what to do anymore. It's like, we, we can hit creeps forever. It means nothing. <laughs> but we'll hit creeps yep. literally forever if it means it. If, if that's what yeah. we need to do, that's what we'll do. Yeah, this is uh, what I like to think now, uh, whenever we're, we're at the scenario. It's, it's a test to see how many players play turbo. <laughs> and it's like, alright, <laughs> this is every single turbo game. You, you reach this point by 30 minutes. And turbo games go for, like, 35 to 40 anyway. So you'll yep. always hit, like, an earlier timer in this ultra late. It's, it's a test to see how patient you can get, to, to see how well you can identify openings. Low. G2RG are dipping outside. Oh, he's alright, he's not showing under vision yet. Low's casually got 13.5k gold just in the bank account right now. Yeah. Interest Literally rates are high, John. Nothing to buy. Oh yeah, I mean, they should definitely implement that Dota 2 economy sim. Oh, you know? Manet! Oh. He's gonna get spotted here by the Necro units. But they will not make the jump in. This is under the vision of the Dire, so you don't necessarily want to fight around that area. Smoke out, once again, AR, they are gonna see Manet, that'd be a great target. FY looking for a skewer, will oh, not get one. Oh. Meanwhile, JT, he's got a two-man RP. He has found himself an inch by the looks of it, and FY also dropping, somehow still alive. FY makes it out again. Meanwhile, X Nova in the middle of all this, trying to survive as JT RP? pops another RP, fighting two targets. They've got the Aegis of Low. Low is down the first time. Ori dropping quickly on the timber. We'll go down to boot if they swap Low back swap. in. Low gonna try to run, but he's gone. But he does have buyback. Buyback will be committed. FY the only one down without buyback right now on the Ruby. He's down for 100 seconds. He still bought out earlier. I mean, bought back earlier. It's still within the buyback cooldown. Only about 20 seconds away. So does have that option. Divine is now bought out Here by Low. Which is what you want to see. You know, you commit the buyback. You might as well go all in. It's all or nothing now for the side of Azura Ray G2 IG. That little venture out does pay off. And they, uh, they have to deal with this Luna, though, who is doing a lot of damage now. Like, uh, a Lucent Beam with Conda Spam feels nice. Eclipse with a Spell Amp also feels pretty good. So we'll see how much longer they can drag this one out. Azura Ray Roshan, two and a half minutes until we see that respawn timer coming in here. This time it should be G2 IG favored in finding that position into the pit. On the side of Azura Ray. I mean, honestly... Your, your next option is to just scale up in Chan Ming. He is trying to go for the Hex still. He has not had that much time to get that farm up, unfortunately. So it is going to be stalled out. Level 30 timings are up for low. So he does have the additional damage on Lunar Blessing, which I suppose is nice. But doesn't feel like the be-all and all in comparison to Monet's level, 25, level 30 timings. His level 25 talents are all very, very useful here. Nothing to say... Oh, but They'll try. And they will. Bark. We'll have the smoke broken. Is going to get skewered back. JT, oh, he's got back. himself a primary target. Bark still in trouble. He's gone. He'll commit the buyback. Meanwhile, Ori going deep. will try after Mane. Mane will be able to wave from away, though. There's nothing to say. Trying for a TP. Oh, gets swapped out by FY. FY able to set up on the tiny. Gets a tieback. Here is X Nova. X Nova will be following as well. Two down for G2IG. A perfect swap out from FY. But NTS, well, he didn't have buyback. Now he does. Yeah, they, they are in a fine position for G2IG. 
You are, again, dragging the game out here on the side <laughs> another of his array. Another divine coming after Baboka. He can uh -huh. just threaten the end. This is scary for the side of Azura Ray. Yes, they can win the team fight. They might be able to try sieging high ground, but this Clinks can just literally solo end the game. You have to keep track of Aboka. You have to have those TPs ready on Azura Ray. It's down to these minute decisions, these snap decisions on what to do on the map. And did ping out the position earlier, but not going to be able to catch out JT there. So it does manage to bail out. Roshan again. Still half a minute until we see when the respawn is. Tips out onto low. Double oh, rapier. Yeah, double divines on low. Uh, I love I love the counter divine of a poker. Just you know, just abuse the tar bomb. It's pretty stupid. <laughs> yeah, that it is. You know, something that's weird. I, I think that's that's why I see the projectile of Kanda when. Monet turns into Luna when even on an illusion, like he uses morph on an illusion, a manta illusion, the damage still goes to low. I do not know why. That is, it's kind of funny. Yeah. Instead of damaging the illusion, so there's some interesting cross map chip <laughs> damage. I it guess. It is what it is, John. It is what it is. <laughs> we don't, we won't understand everything in this life, you know. But we just sometimes you have to accept. It. It's true. 1,000 damage per right click for low. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, you see, the Kanda hits him again. It's like, it's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's why? Like, uh, what, what kind of interaction is that? It's an interaction. It's it's something. The FY now with an ethereal blade up. FY, he's been very good on this Rubik. I mean, just throughout these team fights, just the longevity of his life and you see every time NTS trying to chase this guy down just trying to get rid of the Rubik ASAP seen the same thing from JT even Baboka hunting him down consistently through the fights Azure heading up towards the top left side of the map now JT is smoked Ori is going to be spotted oh. JT pops his BKB early but does go for the RP skewer back oh, play but a nice swap from FY again FY will buy his core space to be able to get away, but that team down with that buyback, Ooh. and now, oh, JT commits an RP, the, the is going to miss out, and now the Eclipse is coming out, JT, Ooh. he's going to make it. Oh, that's that's so scary. They only commit the one Eclipse. It doesn't quite clip, but you can see how much it does on an isolated target. No double RP, no RP at all for the side of G2IG, inching closer towards Roshan at the least a minute spawn so you've got time to regroup again on g2ig that will give you at least one rp ready as well for the next team fight no buyback for fy but they are in position smoke out azure one eclipse left with a spell amp from the divines it's it's a ton of damage here i mean it is nothing to say gonna break the smoke they will spot him ori though misses the chain still gets the double chakram off and now the eclipse is on oh he has nothing to say has gone but he will buy back Right into the fight they come. Ori is still diving really deep and needs to get out because Monet is right on the chase here on the timber. He'll eat the cheese and continue to try to run, but they surely have enough damage here for Ori to go down eventually, and they will. Ori will get tossed up. Is still alive, though. He's going to make it out. Buck, in the meantime, he'll get a pulverize on the Morphling, but now he needs an escape route. Tosses up from nothing to say. Buck has his Aeon Disc popped. Will continue to be tossed up, and Buck... He is gone. No buyback available. Three down for Azure. No buybacks on either one. G2IG. They will go for Roshan, it seems. They will not rush the base yet. Oh. Low. He wants to rush that base. And JT is there to push back the creep wave. Oh, Low. Low. Low's going to jump in. JT. He will skewer it away with his BKB, but Low's chasing him down. He just needs a bit of vision here onto JT, but he'll miss out for now. The mag is alright. Low, back to the base for him, or is it? Where are we going, Low? It'll be back to the base. This is going to be a real quick end from G2IG if they get on top of that ancient. No tier 4s. This clink's doing so much work. Baboka basically setting up all of those kills with Nullifier, taking care of the Aeon Discs that they have amassed on the side of Azure Ray. Making short work of them here in the middle of these fights. Two lives up on nothing to say. Again, the push does not take long. 
Azure has to do something amazing here to stop this. Maybe you skewer back, maybe you swap back. Uh, FY has to set that up. Oh, Eclipse that again, nothing to say. He's just getting perma-stunned here by the Eclipse, but X-Nova will swap him out. Problem is he might die because of this, but still survives for now. X-Nova still dropping, but nothing to say with Ori tossing him back. Ori trying to go for the kill on the Tiny will miss out. Meanwhile, Skewer, it is not going to catch FY. They still really want the Rubik quite badly before they commit to the full team fight. But it is a 5v3 with an Aegis up on nothing to say. They will continue on that top racks. Hex is out. Ori, Ori going to jump in once again against four heroes. He is dropping quite low now. RP out. JT, he's caught the Rubik. FY, the big target they really want. Aeon disc pop, but FY can just go nowhere. He is wait, down. Wait, low. He was trying to end. Oh, low is trying to on end. The ancient. The Ancient almost going down low, almost getting away with it, not quite though. Meanwhile, Azure still trying to hold out. Low is still rushing back towards the Zaya base. Jian Ming trying to defend Buck. He'll pulverize. Low still trying to get into the base of the Dyer. Can he Low? do it? He's Low? got Blink up in one. He'll go for the Low, Ancient. Here comes the TPs. Low. Oh no, the backdoor protection. He's going to try anyway though. He's got the he might have the damage, Low. but no, Low. Mane. Low. Still trying to oh. get him. Ori, can he do it on the timber? I don't think he can. They'll skewer him back into the fountain. Ori. Ori is gone. Low. He loses both Divine Rapiers. But he, they're still in the game, John. In fact, he's got one Divine. They pick one up around the Radiant base. The game is not over for Azure Ray <laughs> off the back of low. <laughs> oh, my oh, God, low. Talk about a grand final, huh? These two teams. Uh, tell me they don't <laughs> deserve to be here, John. They definitely deserve to be up here. How is this game one? Oh. How is this game one? Make it, that double two Divines are back up. All right, low on you. Low and you, they're ready. I'm mean, that's that's what Boboka should have done, right? Just go for the ancient as well. He's got the space, he's got the burning army ready to run. Let's see if that opening presents itself again for the side of G2IG. But Azure Ray, good god, <laughs> it's it's it, it's I can't believe this is a best of five game one. I, I just cannot comprehend it. Oh, it's it's a it's a great you know, it's a great setup here for us, John. It gets us nice and excited. The blood's pumping, Manet. Sitting with 16.5k gold in his bank account. We'll head up towards the north. Oh, low. They know he's there. He cannot afford to die right now. Low. Low. Gonna try and get away. Manet did not spot him. They did not see the Luna. Low is okay to retreat. He does not have gold to buy any more divines right now. So he, he can't really afford to die. Let alone the fact that he has no buyback for 6.5 minutes. Yeah, he's gonna have to be patient. Or have his team provide an opening and then get that split push onto the Ancient. Really heads up play from low. Forcing the TP backs allows the defense to actually work out here. Under high ground, they hang on to one Rax with an Ancient. Ooh, Naked Ancient here. Oh. BKB pop. Buck is on the chase. Pulverize is available. Blink up in one. Buck wants to try for it, I think, but no. Nothing to say. Had his own blink ready. Meanwhile, mid lane G2 IG grouped up again, hoping for somebody to show on the creep wave. Bark is going to be there, but I don't think JT can quite re- Oh, maybe he can. He's going to go for the Hawk oh. Toss. He's got the skewer on Bark. Bark going to get RP'd. Bark is gone. Buyback available, though. It's still a 5v5 if you commit the buyback. It is. Force the Eclipse out. And then, and Lowe did have to sell almost all of his util. So no Hurricane Pike. No refresh on hand to get that secondary Eclipse going here. No threat for G2IG. 44k lead a mass for G2IG. Doesn't account for much. You look at the win probability, Mike. It's only 31 to 69 in favor of G2IG. 30 to 70 now. So despite all of yeah. that, I mean, there's still a fighting chance. Azure Ray have been hanging on there. Yeah, it's so down to G2IG. They need to pierce up here. If you're just tuning in, welcome back to the TI-13 Grand Finals here between G2IG <laughs> and Azure Ray. Tian Ming. Ming? Will show up. JT gonna get hexed up. However, Chan Ming just gets destroyed. Mane not messing around. There is a buyback though, but they'll get the buyback out of Bark first. Chan Ming. Not a hundred percent sure what he was thinking, but maybe just trying to set something up for somebody. But it doesn't really work out. Still, he does have buyback. He's all right. And he is, and you can see how much damage he has. It does force out. Uh, some response from G2IG. G2IG going up for their own smoke. RP up in 9 seconds with a double ready to go on the refresh. 
Azure raids, do or die. You can't afford to lose low. You oh, don't have low. any waves shoved in. JT, uh, Spidey senses perhaps, low. Hey, oh, he's going to show. But he does blink away. Does blink away. He's going to be alright. Nothing to say. We'll have a look on the higher ground, but won't see anything. The Ancient is still exposed. Bark is currently hiding in the Ancient. Not the sneakiest of hiding <laughs> here from Bark, but... You know, it's something. Not the best camouflage I've ever seen. Brown boots still at uh, 82, 83 minutes, by the way, here for Bark. There we go. Look, very, very sneaky. Uh, could not ever guess there was a Primal Beast hiding in there. <laughs> Jump in. Oh, RP oh. is out. JT's guessed. He's found himself the Primal Beast, and that's going to be a dieback. Bark is gone. Two minutes without him. 5v4 at the best for G2IG and Azura Ray. Onto the Mega Creeps they go. G2IG, they won't rush the Ancient yet. Bottom racks it is. They have to respect the skewer, FY. They managed to steal it, just needs uh -oh. one angle in. But can they just focus the Ancient? Manet, he's gonna try, That's FY so will fast. jump in, the Eclipse is out, Manet's just perma stunned up, the BKB will offer him a little bit of life, as low will rush in, but Manet, he still wants that Ancient, he doesn't care, nothing to say doesn't oh either, they've God. got game one! They have got game one, G2IG! What a fashion it was, my goodness, 83, 84 minutes into the game! They make it work, they run.